There are lots of jigs out there to help you cut dovetails like this, but you might have a jig already in your shop that you haven't used for dovetails yet. I want to show you how to cut dovetails on the bandsaw, at least half of them. Want to check that out? Stick around. I've got so many dovetails to cut for these workbenches that we're building in the workbench course that have gone through some paces and I'm using the, the bandsaw to assist in cutting part of that joint. Uh, we've got these long rails that need to be dovetailed. So the bandsaw was ideal to assist in cutting this part of the joint. Now this is the side. These are the tails. If you don't know the terminolo terminology with dovetails, this is the tail shape. It's flared like an actual dovetail. So there's two tails here. The other sides that come out are the pins. So we're going to be making a half blind dovetail. If you look down on my bench right here, this is kind of beaten up, <laughs> but the new bench is going to have dovetails just like this. So we're cutting the tails and then we're going to cut the sockets with the pins after. All right. So let's get to it. Now I could draw this shape out on this. This is actually soft maple. This is pretty hard and heavy, but we'll use this for the demo. Um, I'm going to, I could just have pre-drawn this, laid it all out. Let me do this here. And you know, I would have laid this all out with a gauge and these, Dovetails are actually 10 degrees, so you would lay them out with a pencil and you'd have something like that. And you're going to want to take out this area and this area. I know I've got that fairly light, but you'd have to lay that out on every single one if you're going to cut them by hand. These are big, so they are challenging to cut by hand as well, but doable with a sharp saw and a lot of patience. Especially the harder the wood, the more difficult cutting dovetails is. So. Here's where the bandsaw comes in handy. We're going to actually start off by notching our stock. By notching it, it's going to assist in the way we lay out. So it gives you a, a ledge to lean on when you knife around the shape. You'll see more about how that's going to come in handy in a minute. But I'm going to do that on this piece. So we want to notch that inside edge like three eighths of an inch. So we'll go to the bandsaw, then we'll head over to the table saw and square the shoulder around. All right, so let's check this out. Over at the bandsaw, I've got a stop set up on this bandsaw and it's set up three eighths of an inch off the fence and I've got a second stop that's gonna stop me just shy of an inch and five eighths, which is the length of my dovetails. So I'm going to set on here. Here we go. All right. So with that done, now we can head over to the table saw and we're going to make the cross cut here. So I'll get that ledge that I was talking about. Then I'm going to flip up on edge and make this little side cut as well on both sides because we've got it set up, might as well. So I've got a stop already set up. The table saw blade is up to just about three eighths of an inch to just touch that, that uh, side of that tail. I'll make this in two passes so I don't trap that cutoff piece. All right, so you can see what we've got here. We've cut our ledge in the back and we'll clean that up after, but that, then we've got it squared around. So we've already got our shoulders created. Now we're gonna use the other bandsaw with a little jig, an angle jig to make these 
tail cuts. Quite often we're laying out these, these types of dovetails with a bevel gauge like this. This one's set to 10 degrees, the same as these large dovetails. And you'd flip it around to get this one and then mark this one over here. And you'd go through all of them and mark that way. Well, rather than using that 10 degree uh, bevel gauge on every one, I made a wedge. This is the secret weapon for cutting a bunch of tails on your bandsaw. This wedge is 10 degrees. So you can make them 14, eight, whatever you want, but I'm going with 10 for this. So that angle is 10 degrees down and I tacked a stop on the end, which is gonna be a reference for us to catch the end of our workpiece. So let's go over to this other bandsaw and I'll show you how we'll work this. So here's our wedge. Now I could try to freehand this and I'd probably wobble a little bit, but what the wedge does is it comes in. I'm going to stop against the piece. Now I just hold firmly against the fence and I'm going to push forward. So I'm going to make a 10 degree angled cut right there. Then rather than moving the fence, I'm just going to slide over and use this spacer which is about an inch and seven eighths. And that's gonna get me the other side. And then I'll flip, I'll just flip and cut the other side. We've got to get this material out of there. I could have used the band saw to cut some of that, but let's try the coping saw. See if we can cope. <laughs> Why does that never get old? That is such a dad joke, right? Uh, All right, I'm going to just come right here and start turning. Old, old faithful. <laughs> uh, Tony's asking, should that spacer register at the front of the jig? Whoops, uh -oh. <laughs> there goes my thing. I'm gonna go. <laughs> that's, Not coping very well. <laughs> no, <are> <laughs> I can't cope. Oh no, I can't cope. No, uh, okay. I'm gonna go back to the bandsaw and rough that pressure. out. So we have to make a crisp cut to the shoulder. I set up this marking gauge actually to hit right on the shoulder of that cross cut we made on the table saw. So that's our shoulder for our dovetails. So I should have done this before, but it doesn't matter. I can still do it right here. I'm going to just scribe right across with that nice marking gauge. So I get a nice knife line shoulder to shoulder. Now I'm going to clean out this middle section, but before I do that, I'm going to just hand saw these end pieces. Should the spacer register at the front of the jig? Um, the spacer really didn't matter 
it was holding it just parallel to the fence. Um, as long as it's solidly in there, I was just making sure I had it solidly against the fence. So it just was registering a parallel space uh, against the fence in my jig. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna lightly go straight down, take that off. Now before I move, I'm gonna go ahead and chop this. You know, I could do it by hand, but I'm gonna use the little mallet. And I can come in this way. See, I use that shoulder as a beautiful guide. And then I get a nice, crisp, clean inside cut. We'll flip it over. I'll do the same thing. Sorry, I'm not letting you see this one as well, but I'm gonna just repeat over here. We should probably mention that we will put a, a video inside the description for how to do a little slower <laughs> process of dovetailing. We've got a, a through dovetail, yeah. We did that big, uh, that big one one yeah. night. Yeah, that was to show a certain technique. I'll add that. Yeah, that Show be some good. Of, the, of what you're doing in a slower pace. Yeah, so we pretty much utilize the bandsaw for the jig. Now we have to clean this out and we're going to finish the cut the old fashioned way, but at the same time, we'll be using some speedier techniques. So this is gonna be a half blind dovetail, so it's a little more challenging than a lot of the through ones you might see, because the through ones are faster to show. I'm just gonna go about halfway each side here. I'm gonna to slide to the left so that the chips don't hit me. Now they're gonna hit the camera lady. But she's guarded by that. I'm sorry. I would never put you in harm's way. No. All right, here we go. Not really a danger here. We'll go right across here. That little nub. Now just clean everything into plane with those shoulders. That's what we're going for here. Side's good, let's flip. And we just gotta get that center right there. So I'm gonna do this in two paths. It's kind of a big lop to, if I chopped all of that at one time, my chisel would probably bruise in and jam. And I'm gonna set it right in the knife line. Here we go. I'm just giving it kind of an inward cut or I want to be right at 90. Or slightly inward here. Now let's see. We've got a little cleanup in this space we can do. So we'll just use the chisel and complete that kind of line in both directions. And I'm gonna clean that material up right inside there. Nice and crisp inside. This is where you can't leave any extra stock or it's gonna jam up when you try to fit the dovetails. So this is a good project to sharpen your chisels before. I mean, they're all to do that but you gain such a benefit all right so that looks pretty good I want to make sure that I don't have any mound of material in there and I can see I'm holding flat and my chisel is hitting flat there and it's hitting flat there so if your chisel laying across is rocking you've got a, some high material that's good I'm ready now to transfer the shape to the pin material and cut out the sockets. Now I could do this with cherry. Um, I, all I have is some really hard cherry, so I'm gonna use this pine. So we're gonna bring it over here and 
mark out. This is the same thickness as the end blocks that are going to be on our benches. In fact, this, we've been doing our practice on this. So I'm going to use a little riser block to set this in here. I just want to get it about that high so I can register this well. Yeah, that's good. Now I'll throw that block out there. Now I'm going to, it's resting nice on there. Now see, this is where that ledge comes in super handy. So that just, I know if I just pin that tight to that surface, that shoulder is registering dead on. So it helps me to get a really nice result. Now I'll use my square, this flat piece, to flush that up with that edge. Okay, so I'm now I'm flush with that surface. Whoops. Helps if I don't move after I say that. Okay. Now I'm gonna hold it in this position, and this is where I just simply knife around those shapes. And we just have to cut out the negative space of these tails. Okay, so this is giving me a nice knife line. I'm going to turn and knife this way. I'll get, see the flat back of the marking knife is against the tail. So you give it two cuts. You don't want it too much. Now I'm going to get the ends so I can just hold it flat on the end, go right across. Okay, so let's pop this off, see what we got. Beautiful. So we're going to take out this material. So we don't get confused there. And I'll set this pins aside. Let's bring this up. Now, I've got a different depth. I'm not going this full depth. So when this goes in, I'm not going to go that full depth. I'm only going in this depth. So I set up this marking gauge to just overlap with that. So that's gonna register the depth of these tails. So I'm gonna just set it right on there, scribe right across. Okay, now i am pin this on my bench. These will be among the last dovetails I cut with this bench. It's kind of sad, but the new bench is going to have so many nice features that's going to make this easier, and so stick around for that. <laughs> All right. Oh, and if you want to watch that bench course, we're picking it up on um, Saturday. It's never too late to join because all the other sessions are recorded and uh, you can check out the bench. It's a new design. I like it a lot. And it's, um, it's like seven feet long. And it is a, how many sessions are we at now? 12? We just filmed number 12 last night. So wow. 13 on Saturday. So it's been, it's been almost like a double course, but Probably one of the most enjoyable. I've, I've had a great time doing it. I love making furniture, but this is almost like furniture for your shop. So it's utilitarian, uh, but we're trying to make it nice and practical and just to give us really good service. All right, so while I was chatting there, I was squaring these lines back and I'm scribbling on the negative space. Now we just have to take out everything that's in that negative space. These lines on the front, these knife lines, they're the key. So when I saw with my dovetail saw, I wanna just touch the saw into those lines. I don't wanna go over it. And these pencil lines are more or less more of a guide that I wanna track on. I'm gonna overcut those. I'm not concerned with this. 
this face on the benches is actually going to get glued onto the um, glued onto the face, so you never see it anyway. But uh, a very common period furniture to see the Craftsman overcut like this on a half blind. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to lightly make this cut. Let the saw track right along that knife line. If you miss, if you come away from it, you want to miss on the waist side. So I'll hit this one. Because you can always use the knife line to push your chisel. Beautiful. All right, we're going to flip. I think you probably can't see this now. I know you can't because the shadow of the light. It's okay. I can see. You can? Okay. Mm -hmm. Just imagine this is a perfect cut. I haven't seen many other than that from you. <laughs> oh, you say the nicest things. So in the cherry, it's the same. It's just more laborious and, um, but same exact experience. Now, rather than chopping all this out, the a Forstner bit is an incredible tool to get a lot of this waste out. And then we can come back and quickly chisel out those sockets. All right, here we go. I've got the depth set. So it's gonna come just shy of our knife line. So see how that wastes out a lot of it. And now we just have to chisel to those knife lines. Okay, I'm just gonna grab the three quarter inch chisel. Actually, I'll start with a half. And I'm just gonna rough it out right now. I'm not going right for the knife lines yet. I'm gonna step inside them and just get a lot of this material out of the way. So these first cuts are down across the grain. Cutting those fibers. I'm trying to get down into the corners there so then the fibers start releasing like you're just seeing. Right down. Okay. Now we can come in from this direction and we can start pushing this way. And because we made those first cuts, these release a little more easily. Okay, now there's my knife line. So I'm gonna just rough down to there. Let's get this side out. Just 
chunking and breaking these things out. Now we can use the wider chisel. I'm going to rough. I'm not going to go quite to the knife line here. Leave about a sixteenth or so. Just pushing. It would be the exact same with the cherry, just harder and slower. Okay, now once I've got that, I've roughed out. Now I'm gonna use the chisel and set it right to the knife line. I'm going with the three quarter now. It fits in there really nicely. And I'm gonna hold this at 90 degrees or slightly undercut it. Okay, now I'll get down into the corner. And down into the other corner. Same thing here, set it right in that knife line. Again, down into that corner. Okay, now let's come in and just push some of these side pieces out of the way, if they're in the way so that you can get that corner. Now, we're gonna push in. We'll come back and clean those up a second. But now we're gonna set the chisel right in the knife line at the bottom. There it is. And just push nice and level forward. Same thing here. Wanna make sure we're horizontal in the same plane here. You can even slightly undercut it. You don't wanna leave it rising or it will cause the tails to jam when they go in. Same thing here. Okay, now it's a matter of cleaning up and making sure my saw cuts are all good to the knife line. These I'm gonna just push straight in where the saw couldn't reach down in that corner. Over here. Seeing slightly knife line here, but I'm not gonna worry about that. That'll probably fit. And then over here. See that little flake? That's where the knife line was. So let's just put the chisel right inside that flake there and push straight. Okay, now we're gonna just clean into those corners. Lastly, we gotta go down the back and get down into that corner. Get those fibers out of there that are hanging out right here. And here. All right, so if we marked out well, if we made good knife lines, and we cut to the knife lines, what could go wrong? Let's check it out. All right, so here's our piece. We cut with our bandsaw, knifed around. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Isn't that nice wow. when it goes together? Let's put a little water on it. That's always makes you feel good. Amazing. So normally I'd stand it up on the bench, but I just had a feeling about that one um, and press down into it. But here you can see how nice and that assist we got from the bandsaw made that all the easier. Here's, here's another one that I did in cherry earlier. So this will be the actual look of the bench. Let me see if this goes. This is the way I usually assemble them is pushing them down like that. Same exact process. So let's wet this one. And there you can see the actual so way the bench is gonna look from the front. And let's check this one out. The pine has a look of its own. And so there you go, like two 
dovetails cut using the bandsaw, a ready-made jig sitting in your shop. If you just use that little angle jig to cut your tails, and then it's a little old fashioned uh, hand sawing and chopping to the line. Any questions? No questions. All right, everyone. Mind. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Remember, if you enjoy this content, uh, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing. And most of all, check out our website at epicwoodworking.com, especially if you're curious about that workbench course, which is ongoing. You can take it anytime, but there are still at least three sessions where I will be live and we will finish that up. So, hey, thanks also for just coming and hanging out in the shop with us for a little bit. On behalf of the camera lady and myself, yes. we look forward to seeing you next time right back here on Shop Night Live, where we can cope. All right. Good night, everyone. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Take care.